In the beginning, when the world was dark and full of chaos and there was nothing, God came and created and said, said, it is good. In the end, when it was still dark, when she had been up so night long all night because her rhythm was off because she was full of grief and couldn't sleep in that darkness. As soon as she was able to leave because the day was over in that barely hint of light, she walked to the tomb. She walked to the tomb and found that it was empty and more tears streamed down her face because how could they have stolen his body? They hadn't even had the chance to say goodbye. They hadn't had the chance to lovingly take care of him, wash him and clean him, make him ready for burial. And now he was gone. And so she sat there in the garden, crying and weeping. And then she saw two men in the tomb and asked where they had taken him. And still crying with those tears running down her face, she thinks it's the gardener coming up to her because there was dirt under his nails. Or maybe it was because, you know, they had taken his clothes. So maybe he grabbed the first set of clothes there in the garden he found and they were the gardener's clothes. Maybe she thought he was the gardener because John wanted us to know something. John wanted us to know that here in that new dawn, in that new light, it was like the beginning. It was like the beginning when God created all there was and blessed it and said it was good. When God took the very dirt of the earth and formed it into human shape and blessed it and said it was good. Maybe she noticed pruning shears. Because you know the stories that when God comes, God will take those pruning shears and cut away everything that is bad and wrong. Maybe she noticed flowers blooming around him, fruit beginning to spring up. She noticed him in the garden and thought he was the gardener. And maybe that's an apt metaphor because I will admit that this line had never struck me before. I didn't usually focus on those words of Mary thinking he was the gardener. But maybe it's an apt metaphor because if we think about what it takes to grow stuff, if we think about what it takes to take a seed and put it in the ground and hope that it rains enough, but not too much. That it's cool, but not freezing. That it's just right so that in the time it takes for when you put that seed in the ground, it will sprout and a flower will bloom. And it isn't always easy to grow those seeds, right? Here in California, you know that some seeds for our most spectacular trees have to be burned in order for them to come back to life. There are other seeds that have to be waterlogged so that the water bursts it open so the seed can sprout. There are other seeds that won't make it unless they go through the digestive processes of animals. And there are some seeds that have to be in the dark, buried deep. Maybe that's an 
apt metaphor for us. I want you to think about this. Did you know that they took a 2,000-year-old seed that they found in the excavation of Harold Antipas's home, palace? And some archaeologist who is a gardener thought, why don't we try to grow it? And so she took that seed and she put it in water and fertilized it and waited. And that 2,000 year old seed sprouted. And she discovered that it was a palm tree, a palm seed. And she took that seed and planted it and named it Methuselah and waited for it to grow and grow and grow to see if it could cross-pollinate with the other palm trees. And they decided just to make sure that they would take some of those other seeds they had discovered in Israel around the, the archaeological site and see if they could get them to sprout also. So they planted six more palm trees. I think it was a palm fig, but... Anyway, the point of the story is they took those trees, planted them in one of the kibbutzes, and those trees are growing. And Methuselah, Methuselah has cross-pollinated and made babies with another tree because he was a guy. They thought he was a girl. They named him Eve, but, well, you know, things change when you look at him closely. <laughs> what is the Easter story? It's meant to be that kind of hope. That even a 2,000 year old seed, under the right conditions, with the right care and tenderness, with the right nurturing and the proper planting, can grow into a tree that can spawn other trees and create fruit for us to eat. Can you imagine if we think about how amazing God is that God can take that 2,000 year old seed and create a plant years and years later? So when maybe when Mary saw, maybe when Mary saw that man and said gardener, she wasn't misseeing him. She wasn't not knowing who it was, but was proclaiming an identity for Jesus. Was proclaiming that Jesus is the gardener. The new Adam who sets out to plant the earth and name all the animals. The new Adam who recreates the world. Maybe what she said was prophetic. Maybe she was telling us that when Jesus was there in front of her, the gardener, the beginning, the beauty of creation was now present and for her. And so when he said her name, Mary, Mary, when he said her name, Mary, and her eyes opened, she knew that life was never going to be the same. And he wants to hold her horses a little bit, right? Because he says, you can't hold on to me. Because what would be your first reaction when you see someone you haven't seen and for, that you thought was gone? It's to grab hold of them and hug them close and never let them go, right? And he says, don't hold on to me. You have to let me go. But tell them. Tell them the story. And that's when she proclaims it. She, the first woman, the first preacher, the first one to say the words, I have seen the Lord. Seen him 
in all his messy finger dirtiness. Seeing the dirt beneath his fingernails and the clothes with dirt on them. Seeing that Jesus, the gardener, was there to help grow. Was there again to help the new earth come into being. Help what was broken become whole. Help us to live when the living seems so hard. Help the seeds to sprout. The vines to be pruned. The fruit to be spread far and wide. Amen.